Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 125, Teens and Accountability. I am your host, Joseph Whalen, and my responsible and accountable co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? All right. How about you? I'm doing okay. How was your week this week? Um, so far, not bad. So far? It's Thursday. It's got to be fairly decent, right? Yeah, so far. Okay, good. No major issues, no major problems, nothing to talk about. I mean, there have been stuff, but like, not like extremely bad stuff. Enough to make a podcast? Maybe, maybe a later date. We'll just pile all this stuff together and then we'll make a podcast out of it. Sure. Okay. That's not what we're talking about today, though. Nope. Today we are talking about teens and accountability. This week we'll be talking about uh, what accountability is and how to hold teens accountable. Then we'll talk about setting goals and how to help our teens realize those goals. And finally, we'll talk about uh, ways to help instill accountability in teens and help them make themselves successful. But before we do that, I would invite our audio, our listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast, you can get audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. You can get video versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Things. You can get us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon, uh, Podbean now, uh, as well as Buzzsprout. Any place you can get a podcast, you can get, uh, you can get us. I would also invite you to uh, reach out, contact us, give us your your suggestions for shows, give us your feedback on how we're doing. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can find us on Twitter at twitter.com slash insights underscore things. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. Or on Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things we can get links to all that and more on our official website at www.insightsintothings.com. Shall we get into it? Yes, we shall. All right. So what is accountability? So our definition for accountability comes from a site we've used before called middleearthnj.org. And they say, the definition of accountability is taking responsibility for one's actions, and it is something every parent hopes their teen will do. That's kind of a subjective statement. I'm, I'm assuming every parent does, but I'm sure there's a few out there who would care less. When parents teach their kids to take responsibility for their decisions and actions, they help them develop into conscientious human beings and responsible citizens of the community. Without accountability, Teenagers blame others and refuse to follow rules they find unfair and find ways to justify their behavior regardless of the impact on others. So, if we all want accountable teenagers, why are there so many teens and young adults who seem to lack this valuable attribute? Instilling accountability is simply not an easy task. It is a long process that requires patience and diplomacy. Many times, it will appear that our hard work is, is not achieving any results, which can make some parents give up. But take heart. It is possible to raise accountable teenagers in our modern society. And if you don't give up, you will eventually see your teen develop into a responsible adult. The first step is holding your teen accountable. So 
So how do you do that? So before we get into how to hold teens accountable, let me ask you, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the highest, how accountable do you think you are for your actions and the things you're responsible for? I'd say for the most part, I'm pretty close to 10. Okay. Can you give me an example? Uh, let's see. Account. Um, I know I'm accountable for my schoolwork. Right. And how are, how reliable are you at doing your homework, for instance? Pretty reliable. Um, unless I, for some reason, forget it, I'm more than likely able to complete my homework unless I have a problem with it. Or, like I said, I forget it. So, unless you're unreliable, then you're pretty reliable. <laughs> That's pretty much what you're saying. <laughs> like, mainly if I have problems with it, I'll at least try to, like, talk to the teachers, see if I can work something out. Otherwise, for the most part, I'm pretty able, I'm able to get most of my homework done for the most part. Now, are there any areas that you think you could improve your accountability? Um. And, and I ask not having any particular ones in mind either, so. Um. Which means the answer, the valid answer, could be no. Not, to, not, none really come. To, nothing specific comes to mind right now. Okay, well, maybe as we go through uh, the show here, you might come up with a few things, and we might be able to to help you out with some things, or because clearly, if you're a ten out of ten on accountability, you're probably not going to benefit too much from what we have to cover in this podcast, but. Maybe by the end of the show we'll find something, or maybe it'll just this will just be for the enjoyment, entertainment, and education for those listening and watching. Sure. So how do you hold teens accountable? Tell us about that. So here are some so some ways to hold our teens accountable. So older teens do much of their schoolwork chores and other various tasks without much intervention on the parents' part. Because of this, it can be easy to get lax and to think that they are completing more than they sh actually are. We all benefit from having accountability in our lives, no matter what our age. Our teens will definitely achieve more when they know what they're, they are answerable to someone than if they, have com they are left completely to their own devices. And, and I agree with that. I think it's important to have... Somebody, even in, even, you know, with, with me at work, you know, it's important for me to have someone that I can report to, to kind of keep me in line and have sanity checks and make sure I'm doing what's right and getting feedback, positive or negative. So having that there is important. But we do have a few tips for holding our older kids accountable. So the first one we talk about is to do some things together. Just because our teenagers are capable of working independently doesn't mean they should do all their work without any input from us. Even though our roles are often more of a mentor than a teacher, our kids still appreciate some togetherness time from, from time to time. Believe it or not, reading books aloud to our teens is extremely beneficial for them, and it's a great way to make some fun family memories. If your teen is a kinesthetic learner, someone who learns by best by doing and is a hands-on type learner, working on projects together can also be a great experience, which we might have a project this weekend to do. Mm -hmm. We need to give our kids opportunities to see someone doing something and to attempt to do it themselves rather than expecting them to learn everything by reading about it in a book. Learn how to do things together. Watch YouTube videos. Take a community uh, education class or hire someone to teach both of you and have some fun with this. So we also have just simply to talk to them. If your teen is learning about a specific topic, have a discussion with them about it. Ask them to tell you about something new they've learned. Have them explain something to you or show you what they're working on. Find out if they have anything that's currently frustrating them or making it difficult for them to proceed. Brainstorm solutions together and then check back later to see if that actually helped. And then ultimately you have to check their work. So whether they're doing schoolwork or chores, it's important for us to spot check our teens from time to time. Are they doing a thorough job or putting forward their best effort? 
Are they remembering to do what we've asked them to do? There are a variety of ways to do these checks, but it can be helpful to check up on your kids when you get home from work. There is something about knowing that parents will be inspecting their work that will help motivate kids to do their best. So let me ask you, do any of these things, or are you responsive to any of these things? Do these help you to be more accountable? Um, well, I do appreciate when you guys uh, sometimes do things with me. Um, I do appreciate that I kind of get that bonding time with you. Even if you're not helping me direct, helping me directly with something, normally we're always do doing something fun together. That's a good point. Um, and I'd say talk. And I'd say for talking, you guys uh, definitely talk with me. Um, and you always, like, want to know how my day is. And a lot of times it can sometimes help if I'm having a bad day. Right. How, how are we about checking up on your work and holding you accountable for it? Are we strict about that? Are we too strict? Are we not strict enough? Do you feel as though, you know, we're involved enough in what you're doing to, to kind of help guide you that way? I mean, yeah, if mommy ever sees something that I might have not turned in an assignment right, she always makes sure to let me know, just making sure that, you know, I'm held accountable for all my assignments. And I think that's important. I mean, being responsible for your own work is very important when it comes, especially when it comes to schoolwork. Mm -hmm. But outside of schoolwork, there's other things. And I think accountability is, is all about having goals and accomplishing those goals, whether it's a school goal or something else. So we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back and we'll talk about helping our teens realize their goals. We'll be right back. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back. Today we're talking about teens and accountability. And now we're going to be talking about helping our teens realize their goals. And this research comes from a website called ihomeschoolnetwork.com. So accountability is all about goals. They should be personal. They could be personal goals, academic goals, athletic goals, professional goals, or parental goals, such as chores. Once a goal is established, we are held accountable for to achieve the goal. Many of the goals teens are held accountable for are academic in nature. Whether or not you've taught your kids about goal setting in the past, the teen years are an excellent time for a refresher course. Here are five important steps to help our kids sit and reach their goals. And the first step we have here is make it compelling. Set goals to, that get us excited, then we're much more likely to do the work that it takes to get us to where we want to go. We should encourage teens to come up with with things that will make them want to get out of bed in the morning. Help them dream big. You want to also make it specific and measurable. Teach kids to set goals in such a way that they'll know once they've achieved it. It's impossible to reach a goal which is vague, such as get into the college of my dream someday. A much better goal would be get accepted to the University of Michigan by May 1st. Including a deadline is an important way to make a goal measurable. You could also come up with a step-by-step -step plan. If they have large goals, such as getting accepted to a specific college, we should teach them how to break those goals down into smaller steps. For instance, if your child wants to get accepted to the University of Michigan, 
they should come up with daily, weekly, and monthly plans which help them achieve this larger goal. These steps could include such things as researching the acceptance criteria, taking academically appropriate course tracks in high school, taking practice SAT or ACT tests, taking advanced placement tests, developing college essays or developing your community service record, or prepping for on-campus interviews. We also have fun ways to remember their goals. It doesn't do any good to come up with goals and detailed plans for reaching their goals if they are soon forgotten. We need to teach ways to help their goals stay fresh in their mind. Show them how to make vision boards. Have them post goal lists somewhere they will see often. We should also make a point of talking to them often about their goals and dreams. Ask them what they're doing to achieve their goals. Be be sure they aren't stuck. And the final step we have is to take action every day. Our kids will be much more likely to achieve their goals if they work on them regularly. We should encourage them to work on their goals every day or at least weekly. Teach them to create to-do lists and to ask themselves what they can do right now which will move them closer to their goal. So let me ask you, how are you with setting your goals and achieving your goals? Are you goal-oriented? Um, uh, I mean, I try setting goals for the most part. Um, I probably don't set as many goals as I probably should, and most of my goals are kind of vague for the most part. So I think I might need a little more help with goal setting for the most part. See, and and because of what I do professionally, almost everything that I do every day has some type of goal or some type of plan. Um, For instance, we just hired a a new person in my department, and the goal is I need to get this person up to speed so that they can do their job effectively without having um, too much hand-holding. You know, they need to be independent within the first six weeks, and Part of that is having a list of things they need to be trained on, measuring the rate at which they're being trained, and making sure they're getting enough information and feedback, getting feedback from them, getting the feedback from the people that are training them. So, you know, my big thing is I do a lot of outlines. If anyone's ever looked at the show notes, it's the same type of thing. I outline everything so there's a hierarchical order to what has to be done. I have a very, what's called a a waterfall approach to planning things out a lot of times. So you get all your prerequisites taken care of. You get all your steps that you need. You assemble all the pieces that you need. And then later on in the plan, you start putting everything together. Um, And I just, I guess because that's how my job requires me to work most of the time. It's just the way that I do everything in life. You know, we have to do podcast notes. We have to come up with notes. So before we can just sit down and write up notes on a show, what's the first thing we do? Uh, We have to come up with topics. Right. So we sit down, we brainstorm topics, and we have a list of topics that we work from. Once we have that list of topics, what's the next step? We have to pick selective topics and then do research on them. Right. So we do all of our research. We put it into the show notes. Then we determine if... Does this show require a special guest? If it is, we kind of put it into a holding pattern. We try to line up a guest and we schedule things around that. But if we have trouble scheduling a guest, we have to have other shows ready to go because we have a regular recording schedule. Mm -hmm. So these are all things that we have that waterfall method approach for. And, you know, I do things, the same things at home. We're doing um, Dungeons and Dragons or role playing. We're doing a Star Wars role playing. In order to do the Star Wars role-playing, there's a lot of components. You have to make sure you have your overall story. You have to make sure you have your NPC characters. You have to make sure that your players know how to build their characters. You have to select your miniatures. You have to do your backstory. You have to do all these things before you even sit down at the table. So it's like six weeks worth of prep work before you can even sit down and start playing. Yeah. Um, what's something like that that you handle in your day-to-day life where you just sort of fall into that, okay, here's the plan type mode? Um, I guess sometimes when 
I guess uh, homework would probably be one of the things that I have to do. Like, now that I have, I'm going to be having a lot of homework and multiple classes, I kind of have to plan out how I want to do my homework. Like, what can I do during lunch? What can I do when I get home? Yeah. Like, what do I not need to finish right now, but look, need to keep in the back of my mind for later? Right. And what you need to do is what, what I do at work with, with tickets that come into the help desk is triage. Think of a, a hospital in an emergency room. You have 10 people walk in and there's an attending physician. And that attending physician's job is to figure out who needs attention first. Who's in the most serious condition? You're going to triage your, your uh, patients. You're triaging your homework. What homework do I have? What can I get done in the time periods that I have? I have a lunch period that I can work on it. I have a before band I can work on it. I have a, you know, after band I can work on it. They're each shorter and longer times. What can I work on in those times? And then you put a plan together and, and you make it work. So you, you do do this every day. Um, and not everything in life needs to be planned out. You know, if you need to get a shower, it's not, I'm not putting a, PowerPoint presentation together about, you know, getting my towel and getting my, you know, yeah. shampoo and all that. So some stuff you just sort of do, but some of the things like your homework, it helps to have an organized plan of attack. Mm -hmm. So now that our teens have a set of goals in place and a plan to achieve them, how do we hold them accountable? We'll talk about that in more detail when we come back. We're going to take a quick break. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights in the Teens. We are talking about teens and accountability today. You sounded kind of unsure of which show you're doing right now. <laughs> For some reason, I forgot the line. All right. <laughs> I'm the one that does all the shows. You only have one to worry about. Okay, I get it. <laughs> anyway, now we're going to be talking about how to install accountability in your teens. Not install. They're not computers. We're not installing it. Install. Install. Ugh. been a day i understand so the first uh step tip we have um is demonstrate personal responsibility role modeling is the most effective tool parents have for teaching their teens anything any value you want your teen to have simply demonstrate it in your everyday life so if you want your teen to take responsibility for their actions you should do the same avoid blaming others Follow rules and don't avoid the consequences if you break them. If you make a mistake, admit it, apologize, and make amends if possible. You also want to create a culture of accountability in your family. Your family has its own culture that reflects your values, expectations, rules, and hopes. If you want an accountable teen, then each member of your family must be responsible for their own actions and behaviors. Each family member must be responsible for following rules and expectations, and each family member must be responsible for how they respond to stressful or frustrating situations. No one in the family should be allowed to change the rules to fit their own needs or feelings. We also have established boundaries. You must provide your children clear and firm rules and expectations so that they are aware of the consequences of their actions. 
Your teen must also know that if they choose to break the rules, there will be consequences for that choice. Of course, this only works if you don't give in or just give up just because your teen whines and promises to behave or promises to behave. You must see the consequences through in order to see the behavior change. Be involved in their life. Research consistently shows that teens with involved parents are more likely to be responsible and do better in school and less likely to engage in risky behaviors such as drugs, crime, and sex. Establish open, friendly, and honest communication with your children from a young age. Learn about their interests and attend their activities. Showing that you care about and support your teen helps them feel valued, and this in turn makes them more eager to engage with you and want to please you. But on top of that, you probably shouldn't be over-involved. There's a fine line between showing your teen that you support them and micromanaging their lives. As parents, many of us do things for our kids today, today that we were able and expected to do for ourselves when we were children. Our parents didn't often feel the need to negotiate with our sports coach, solve our every problem, or entertain us in our free time. We should let our teens manage their own lives. We should refrain from rescuing our teens. Not our teachers. Not our teachers, right. That was how I read it in, the, in pre-production. Yep. It's painful for us as parents to watch our children go through difficult circumstances. And we typically want to jump in and fix things, which is what I do. Because that's what I do for a living. I fix things. So when somebody has a problem, regardless of what the problem is, that's my first reaction. Yeah. While this is a natural reaction of wanting to protect someone we love, it's actually one of the worst things you can do as a parent. When your child is a teenager, your role becomes more of a coach. You want to guide and support your teen through the difficulty than still allowing them to discover their own capabilities. If we step in, we stop the learning process and deprive our teen from developing the courage needed to try new things and solve problems. Your teen needs to learn now, before they leave your home as a young adult, how to manage obstacles in life, and they need to have experience overcoming a difficulty on their own so that they gain confidence in themselves and realize they're capable. When you rescue your teen, you are inadvertently communicating to them that you don't think they can handle challenges, and your team will begin to doubt their own abilities. Your team will learn to expect that others will take care of things for them, and they will become a master of avoiding challenges instead of facing them. We also have allowed natural consequences. No matter how painful, you must let your team be responsible for the good and bad decisions they have made. It might feel cruel, but it is actually the very best parenting you can offer. If a teen gets a ticket for speeding, he should, they should pay the fine, not you. If they don't have the money, they need to find a way to earn it or lose their license. If your teen procrastinates on a big project, do not do the project for them. If your teen didn't prepare for an exam, don't make, the excuse to, don't make excuses to the teachers and beg for a second chance. Let them receive a bad grade and handle the results. This way, kids will learn how to take responsibility for their actions and deal with the consequences. And finally, praise them when they demonstrate responsibility. Positive reinforcement of any actions your teen takes to show responsibility will encourage them to continue the behavior. Never underestimate the power of a compliment. So on that note, how do you think do any of these hints actually play a part in us instilling accountability in you? Do we demonstrate personal responsibility, Mommy and I? I'd feel so because you both definitely try um you both definitely take your own responsibility when it comes to your work, so I would probably say you have that one down. And that would lead into a culture of accountability for the family. Are we successful when it comes to that? I mean, yeah, um, you guys definitely have, the family I have definitely takes accountability 
um, for their self and selves. So you say that as if there's another family. <laughs> Are you shopping around for another family and no, didn't tell us? No, 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 no. Polish up the resume there. No, no. <laughs> No. How about boundaries? Do we establish clear boundaries for you and and associate consequences, or do we let you off the hook a lot if something happens? You don't really let me off the hook, mainly because I'm not really one to be let off the hook or be on the hook anyway. Yeah, you tend to put yourself on the hook yourself. Yeah. Uh, how about being involved in your life? Are we involved? Do we demonstrate that? We're interested that we're invested in, in your success. Look at what we're doing now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure we kind of established that one. Okay. So the big question is, are we over involved in your life? I mean, I don't think so. You guys still give me privacy and I don't think you're micromanaging my life. I don't think we are either. We keep kind of, you know, we give you as, the, the the rope on the leash that you need and, and you never really tug too hard on it. So Yeah. How about rescuing you? Do we swoop in? I know I do. So you can <laughs> feel free to go into detail if you want. Nah, it's it's fine. Honestly I've already sent, you know, two or three nasty grams into your school already this week and, you know, we're not even through the first full month of school, so I mean, for the most part, I do kind of agree with you, so. Mm. And, you know, it's not a reflection on you that you can't handle things. It's just that I have certain expectations from the school administration and the guidance counselors and the teachers. And when they fail those uh, expectations, I tend to get vocal. It's not a, it's not a, it's not. How can I say this? It's not that I don't think you can solve the problem. I don't think it's a problem you should solve. Yeah. You know, the, there were two specific incidents that we've had so far that there were things that you shouldn't have been involved with because you had already done your part, made your commitment, and, and you know, followed through with what you had to do. And basically, we had dishonesty from on the part of the school. And... My complaint to the school was who's going to be held accountable and how is this setting a good example for the students that you're teaching? So that was about them. It wasn't about you. So I think that's kind of a important distinction. Yeah. How about consequences? Are there consequences when you don't do your homework or you don't do your chores or you don't do something that you're supposed to do? Yeah. Okay, good. That's Straight and to the point. I like that. I mean, yeah. Do we praise you? Do we give you pats on the back? Uh, yeah. Do we lift you up when you're down? Mostly. There's a song in here somewhere I'm trying to get to. I just can't get the words. But, yeah, I th I try to. You know, I think it's important. I think, I think it's important to not be false praise. You know, if, if you've genuinely done something that's, that's worthy of praise, you deserve it and you should be praised. If it's something that you've done a good job, but you could have done a better job or you could have done something differently that would have been better. I think constructive criticism, in addition to the praise, is both uplifting, but it's also helpful in its guidance. Sure. So that's where we go from that. I think that was all we had. Uh, we're going to take a very quick break. We'll come back. We'll get your closing thoughts. And then we'll finish up with the business of the podcast. Be right back. Go with your closing remarks. All righty. So to everyone out there, um, I just wanted to mention that holding your teens accountable is going to help them a lot when they become full-on adults. Being accountable for your actions is something that everyone, no matter how old you are, is going to have to use. And we hope that giving you these steps and these tips will help you help your teens hold hold account hold themselves accountable. And if not, it at least opened your eyes to how you can try holding your teens accountable. Very good. Sage advice as always. Thank you. 
So that is all we had today. But before we do go, I do want to once again invite our listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast. You can get audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. You can get video versions of all the network's podcasts listed as Insights into Things. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Stitcher, Castro, Pandora, and pretty much any place you can get a podcast these days. We would also invite you to write in, give us your feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can get us on Twitter where we do accept DMs at uh, twitter.com slash insights underscore things. You can find high res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. You can get video versions of this podcast on the web at podcast.insightsintothings.com. We do stream five days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. If you are an Amazon Prime subscriber, you do get a free Twitch Prime subscription. We'd appreciate you throwing that our way. You can get audio versions of this podcast listed as podcast.insightsintoteens.com on the web. You can also reach us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast or Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things or links to all those on our official website at insights into things.com and you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and mommy. And it's in the tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother, Sam. And that's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.